like to take a few minutes to walk you through the platform today. So Bellicum is a publicly traded clinical stage cell therapy company. We have headquarters based in Houston, Texas. We also have offices in San Francisco as well as in Zug, Switzerland. We're a fully integrated cell therapy company that's um, based on a molecular switch platform that allows us to differentiate ourselves based on our ability to control cellular activity. We've built an end-to-end -end capabilities um, so that allows us to independently execute on our portfolio. We have the founders and uh, scientific um, the, the team has built a remarkable world-class research and uh, development translational science uh, team that allows us to not only build, develop, but also integrate the key technology platform into all of our cell-based products. We've developed a 25, we've built a 25,000 square foot GMP manufacturing facility that allows us to do our own independent vector production as well as cell manufacturing. We've also built a logistics platform that has been developed and validated that allows it with a fully integrated supply chain that allows for efficient delivery and um, supply of the product. As I mentioned, the key differentiator of Bellicum's business is really our ability to modulate cellular activity in vivo post-administration of the cell product. Most cell therapies are limited in their ability to control the activity of the cell-based product that, that are being engineered. And that limit is limited based on the, the ability to whatever that phenotype or the characteristic of that cell product has before infusion. Materials typically taken from a donor, then genetically modified, manufactured, and processed before preparation to infuse into the patient. That activity that is infused into the patient is inherent to the therapeutic benefit that's going to be provided, but it's limited in the ability to uh, regulate that activity post-infusion and can lead oftentimes to on-target off-organ toxicities, cytokine release syndrome, as well as an unpredictable ability to uh, regulate the efficacy of those products. Bellicum has developed a series of molecular switches that allows us to control the cellular activity after the fusion of the cell product. What I'd like to tell you about today are a couple of those, cell pro those molecular switches that are being developed uh, in the and explored in the clinic. There is an off or safety switch that's been developed that we're using to be able to eliminate cells should an adverse toxicity profile be exhibited by the cell product. There's also an on switch that is being explored in the clinic that allows us to positively regulate the cell product once it's administered to the patient. All of these have been, have been developed to improve the benefit risk profile of these products in the particular indication or setting that we're exploring. The basis of the chemically induced dimerization molecular platform or the CID platform is based on a series of engineered, um, uh, protein engineered, that are engineered to be expressed in a cell as monomers. They're transduced virally, much like all of the other CAR and recombinant TCR products. They are engineered to bind a small molecule known as remigicid. Remigicid is a very unique molecule in that it has no bi known biologic activity other than the ability to bind to these synthetic proteins that have been engineered to bind them. It also has a very interesting um, and, and well-characterized PKPD profile as well, as well as a clinically validated safety profile. Upon binding to remigicid, these, uh, these protein monomers dimerize and will elicit an activity that's engineered into the C-terminal domain of these monomers. And we can engineer them to elicit a tox uh, to induce apoptosis. That's the off switch. We can also take advantage of an activation domain, Mighty88 and CD, a hybrid of Mighty88 and CD40 that allows us to regulate the T cell product activity in a positive direction, and that's our on switch. Using those molecular, platform, those molecular switches, we've developed a highly differentiated portfolio, and I'd like to run you through a few of them. We have the most advanced product is a non-targeted polyclonal T cell product that's being explored in a pediatric setting, mainly in uh, hematologic disorder, uh, genetic hematologic disorders, but also in uh, the malignant setting in pediatric ALL and AML. 
We're building up uh, capabilities to, and actually have initiated trials in the adult setting, uh, in the malignant setting, also in the context of the cell, um, hematopoietic cell, stem cell transplant. We've got a product, BP601, which leverages our on switch. It's currently being explored in non-resectable pancreatic cancer. And then we have two off switches that are in the clinic. One is BPX701. It's a recombinant TCR-based cell product that's being explored in AML and MDS. And then we have a, collabor a long-standing collaboration with uh, the OPBG hospital in Rome and where we're exploring a CD19 um, uh, regulated car that employs the safety switch as well. So let me walk you through uh, in a little more detail some of the clinical programs that we have uh, th that we're currently developing today, starting with BPX501. As I may have indicated, it's a polyclonal, non-targeted cell, T-cell-based product. It's being developed in the context as, and as a, a supplement to a stem cell transplant. Many of you may realize that an allogeneic stem cell transplant is a curative treatment option for a spectrum of fatal malignancies as well as non-malignancies in the hematopoietic setting, but this doesn't come uh, without risk. And a lot of that risk is driven by the nature of the, the, or the, the identity, the degree of percent HLA identity of the donor that's being sought. Ideally, the preferred donor would be looking for a patient uh, or a, a donor whose patient is an, has an identical HLA uh, matched sibling, but that only represents roughly 30% of the available donor population. The other 70% of the population is forced to be to use a donor that's only haploidentical. That increases the risk of GVHD and graft rejection. For those patients that don't have an HLA match related donor, an HLA-matched unrelated donor uh, is required, and that increases the risk even further. There's higher rates of um, transplant-related mortalities, as well as increased incidence of GVHD. There's also a significant additional time, cost, and risk of even being able to find a donor associated with that. It's this liability and these safety issues that we're trying to address with the development of pro the, the 501 product. So who is the culprit in, in the uh, allo stem cell transplant? It really is the T cell. And ultimately, that's the approach that we're taking to further develop the 50, to, to advance the 501 product. T cells come with a lot of benefits in the graft situation. They obviously are, are play a key role in, a, in a, a malignant setting of leveraging the allo activity and generating a graft for, versus leukemia response. So that helps prevent any relapse that you might encounter um, if you were to take those, the T, cell, the T cells weren't there. It also improves infection control as well as the stability and, and dur uh, um, the, just the, like the, the percent success of engraftment. But all of those benefits comes with a risk, and as I mentioned earlier, that allo reactivity associated with the T cell also comes with an increased incidence of graft versus host disease. So if we can modulate the, ability, the, the likelihood of graft versus host disease, we can improve the outcomes of uh, the stem cell transplant. And that's exactly what we're doing with the BPX501. We're addressing that T cell trade-off by taking a rather unique approach, by taking a donor that, and isolating stem cell material from the donor that can be used as the transplant, but then we're depleting the alpha beta T cell from that um, donor population. And then at the same time, we're also isolating a purified T cell population and manufacturing them to contain the safety switch as well as to be able to expand them so that we can add additional more, so we can add more T of that T cell population back to the patient. It's that combination of things and the ability to modulate and, and be able to take those cells out if we see an incident, increased incidence of GVHD that's providing us this product opportunity. So the BPX501 in the alpha-beta depletions or in the alpha-beta null setting is providing us an opportunity to improve the robustness of engraftment as well as the, immune, the speed of in, immune reconstitution. So we're uh, decreasing the likelihood that a patient needs to stay in the hospital as long as they uh, do in, in the, a normal transplant setting. We're minimizing and being able to regulate the uh, GV, incidence of GVHD. We're also in the malignant setting have an opportunity to regulate the, um, the GVL activity and improve the, the likelihood of relapse. 
And most importantly, I think one of the things that comes along with this approach is the ability to increase, improve and increase the donor population um, that we would not, that is not normally available and one of the restrictions that's preventing more people from using stem cell transplants as a curative therapy. So that gives you a background on um, the non-targeted approach. We also have a growing pipeline of targeted T-cell products. Many of them are based on conventional CAR-Ts as well as recombinant TCR. Let me take you a few minutes just to walk you through the, the ones that are in the clinic and being interrogated right now. BPX701 is a first-in-class opportunity that, allow, that it's targeting a, um, the a cancer testes antigen, a peptide. It's a recombinant TCR targeting modality that allows us to target a cancer testes antigen that's not typically found at very high levels anyway in, in normal tissues. It also supports the further proof of concept of the safety mechanism of this, um, of the caspicide approach. We started those uh, trials in the second quarter of this year, and we're currently recruiting those. It's currently being studied in uh, amyelogenous leukemia, as well as um, acute myelogenous leukemia, as well as myelodysplastic syndrome. As I mentioned, we have a longstanding collaboration with the team at the OPBG hospital in Rome. They're also exploring the uh, CAR that's a CD19, and you may ask why we would explore a CAR where we are right now, but I think there's an opportunity there um, to take advantage of some of the toxicities that are still seen in the CAR setting, and if we can modulate that and improve the therapeutic window using the caspicide system, then I think it would be a benefit to patients. And so we are continuing and just gearing up to develop that product um, or get that product into a phase one trial, um, hopefully by the end of this year. The BPX601 product is a first-in-glass um, opportunity for us to test the inducible system. It's a, um, a SESV CAR-targeted product that's um, targeting a PS the PSEA an antigen, allows us to get into some unique cancer, solid tumor cancers, things like pancreatic, gastric, esophageal, as well as other solid tumors. This also represents an opportunity for us to not only test drive it, but look at the to be able to evaluate the ability to use this um, inducible system in a solid tumor setting. The phase one trial for that was initiated in the Q1 of this year, and we're looking to continue to enroll patients um, and in the pancreatic setting there. So as you can tell, uh, 2018 is going to be a, a data-rich year for Bellicum, and we're really looking to some key readouts that will come across the four different programs that are in the clinic. We also plan uh, regulatory filing in uh, 2019, and we're also gearing up for two new study starts to expand the potential opportunity for BPX501 in the malignant setting um, in AML in adults. So in addition to the clinical portfolio, we also have a, a very strong preclinical portfolio, and much of that is driven through some very strategic collaborations that we have with uh, companies as well as a lot of academic medical centers. Adaptimmune is, is a collaboration that was just initiated earlier this year, um, looking at the leveraging the caspicide system in the recombinant TCR setting with their optimized TCR program. We also have the ongoing relationship with OPBG uh, Hospital in Rome, as well as Leiden University in the Netherlands, and countless other academic interactions that we have that are allowing us to really get a strong handle on the utility and exploring different combinations of these molecular switches in the clinic. So I hope that gives you a good overview of um, Bellicum's strategic objectives to become the leader in T-cell therapies, in, not only in cancer, but also in rare diseases. And I thank you for your time, and I'd be happy to take any questions after this uh, session.